Hey folks, welcome to another AR video. This is truly an AR video at this point. I am using the Ray Neo X2, and these are actual augmented reality glasses. Uh, I've got a little 25 degree field of view window, stereoscopic, in the lower frame of my eyesight. So when I look up like this, I can see the real world with a HUD image right now, which says quick wit space right now on the screen. I can use the right temple here to navigate to a camera, to a map, to a laboratory setting, to a translation setting, or to a media player. Now the media player right now is set to my phone. It is currently streaming an Atticus Ross song. So I hit play here, it'll play back resuming playback from where it is on my phone. Uh, I can control things like moving forward to the next song, controlling the volume. And also changing from what's called normal mode, which is where I'm at right now, to whisper mode. Whisper mode enables it so that it's uh, less detected by those, it doesn't bleed out the sound to others as much. For now though, we're just gonna go ahead and pause. We're gonna exit that feature. I'm gonna move on to the next feature, which is the glasses online translation function. So if we click on translation here, you've got real-time translation dialogue translation or AI translation as options. If we do real-time translation, it's going to do the ability to translate from all different languages. We've got German, Spanish, Italian. I think one of those is Korean. One of those might be Japanese, French, English, so let's actually go from English to Spanish here. So if we do English to Spanish, start our translation. So we're going to actually play back a video of someone speaking in English. Let's go with my friend. Hi Brian. guys, PD here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're playing Homeworld 3 in VR with the UVR. That's the Prey Dog Unreal Engine Injector that converts flat games into VR games that you can play in a VR headset. Today I'm playing on the Quest 3. I'm using Virtual Desktop to connect my Quest 3 to my PC with the link cable to play the game. That's pretty cool. So it actually has translated what Graham said into uh, just by what it heard through the microphone uh, in front of me. That's, that's pretty cool. And it works fairly well. There was a little bit of hesitation there where it had to catch up, kind of like subtitles do on television, actually. So again, there's three different versions of the translation. That was the real-time translation. Uh, we've also got laboratory. With laboratory, it says, do you want to use this function? Uh, yes, we do. Um, and then there's three different applications here. Uh, this first one here is a drawing application. Both the drawing application and the ethereal drum AR application require a game board. Uh, it's actually kind of similar to the Tilt 5 game board, where you look at it with the glasses and the camera in the center here that's used for slam detection will allow you to uh, engage with that board with the objects on it or put a place an object on it. Uh, the third option here, Mickey Beta here, is going to bring out a character in front of me. Uh, unfortunately, this has been happening a lot, where it says the glasses temperature is too high to use this beta version application. Try again later. That's the only drawback I have thus far for these glasses, believe it or not. So now we're going to go to the Maps application, which is really cool as well. And this Maps application... Uh, allows you to search for a destination by voice. Best Buy. 
and this is the closest Best Buy location to where I'm at. So if I click on this, it'll show us from where we're at a real-time location map uh, to get to the Best Buy. Uh, this is from a walking path. There's three different directions we can go, and then there's also a riding path, three different directions we can go. I've blacked out the actual map because I don't want you to see where I live, but that's the general gist of it. So up next is a camera application. With the, within the camera application, we have the ability to take photos, record video, record a time lapse, all to the internal capacity of the device. Now the things that will limit this are gonna be the battery, which you can see in the upper left-hand corner there, and the storage space. Right now it says that we can have 24,000 photos in the format that it records, or 12 hours and seven minutes of video, or a 12 hour, seven minute time lapse. So that's a lot of storage space on these little glasses. Uh, unlike things like the Meta Ray-Bans, these also will capture for the duration of the battery or until they overheat. Up next, we've got this quick whip space. Uh, this one's got a whole bunch of tips for AI. So you, you can't really hear Grace uh, because unfortunately it's not capturing the audio, but I can hear Grace. And there's also Amy here. So we'll, we'll, we'll go with Grace for right now. I was wondering what is the best MacBook to purchase nowadays? Thanks, Grace. No. Problem. Happy to help. How can I assist you today? So if I wanted help with shopping for a MacBook, which I kind of do, she gives me some options, some hope there, if you will. Now, moving on from Quick Wit Space, if we move into the App Center, most of these applications are available in the mobile app to download. Uh, I've added a couple of select items for myself. We're just gonna try one of their games. This is the Snake XR game. And as you can see, the Ray Neo game kind of shifts as I move, as does the Snake XR here, beta version. And we just navigate using the right side. Uh, there is also there are also controls on the left-hand side as well. Uh, for now, though, we're waiting for the snake to load in. So we've got three lives. And this is your same general snake game. You know, snake. It's exactly what you would expect from Snake. Got an extra life, which we actually needed there. So just like the Nokia cell phone, Snake is available on one of these early AR glasses products. 
If we go back into the App Center here, again, other games we've got, we've got Stack XR, we've got a Watermelon Fruit. Uh, none of these are really any good. The Snake one is actually the only good one. Uh, Vision Go, I believe, requires you to use that game board. Um, so the real kind of star of the currently existing applications is Snake XR or my favorite transcription and translation application, which is an alternative to the translation application that's built in, X-Ray Glass. So this one I have sideloaded onto the device. And again, you'd be able to use this to transcribe your words and conversations. I'm going to go back to Graham's video here. Transcribe a little bit of his home This video tonight. includes some very important instructions, both from me talking and on screen as well. To get the most out of this game in VR, I would highly recommend you watch the whole video to see the tweaks and settings that I use in the game. I've recorded the gameplay footage on my PC. I've also included some Quest 3 footage that I recorded in the headset as well. This so that's generally the gist of it. Um, as you can see, as I'm speaking, again, it's not picking up my dialogue. If I wanted to include that, but the Ray Neo X2 is very sensitive. When I'm speaking, it picks up my microphone when someone is speaking toward me, it's very, very directional. So you can change that to omnidirectional within X-Ray. So we go back into App Center. Some of the other applications I've installed include TuneIn Radio and Microsoft Edge. Uh, and as you can see, I've got all these applications that are built in. Uh, I will make note, Visor here is just the application that I'm using to capture the footage. That does not come pre-installed. I'm using that just to capture a window so you can see a little bit about how the applications work. For these next couple applications, I do need to use this ring. This ring is intended to fit in the second knuckle of your finger. So you'll go into settings here. You'll go to device connection. It's connected to my phone, but it is not yet connected to a ring. I'll click there. And now we're connected to the ring controller. Go into our app center. And let's just go to Microsoft Edge so you can see what it looks like. When we launch into Edge, if we didn't have the ring controller, it would actually come up with an error message. I've got this saved on my YouTube channel. As you can see, it says you can personalize your experience. We're going to click Not Now. Uh, if I scroll up and down, you can see my most popular videos on my home screen. You can click on Videos here. This is some of my more recent videos. If I click on this one, this is going to take us into my uh, candy puzzle video that I had recently. Click on Ask Me Anything. And uh, let's say we want to go to Plex. We can go to Watch Plex here. Stream movies and TV on Plex. I use the live TV channels on Plex a lot um, on many devices, not just this one. We're going to go to this crime channel just so you can see that it does function. We're not going to leave this on because this is copywritten material, but as you can see, it works. And then if we hold this button again, this will take us back to the App Center. And clip on App Center, and that gives you a general gist of the functionality here. Now, this is an Android device, but if you sideload, it doesn't just play normal Android content. There's a very small list of applications thus far that will actually work with the proper stereoscopic display. Uh, the ones that I'm highlighting here all do work, but others that I've tried, like Spotify, real YouTube, things that might require Google Play services or other connectivity will not work, which is why I've got YouTube and Plex, for example, on the Edge browser. If we go into settings, it's got some standard settings. You've got your display settings here. So you've got auto brightness, which is what I've got right now. You can actually control the display brightness. You can control how quickly it will auto lock. 
Uh, the heads up display, if you look up, which I'll show you in just a moment, is how that will work. And then calibrating the AR so that you've got uh, good virtual reality integration is what it says, but it's actually augmented reality slam. Uh, I can take calls. I can make phone calls and receive phone calls, and I have done so. And then I can accept notifications. I don't have anything set up yet for my notifications. So if I let the screen just kind of fade away, um, if I do this and look up, you'll say, keep your eyes up. And now you can see a quick look at the time in 24 hour time, the temperature in Celsius, the date in European format, and whatever music you're playing, if you've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and battery on. And then if you want to activate the system, you just quickly tap on the right temple. That'll take you back. I was on the auto brightness control here. I'll leave that on and go back to the app center. So the thing that I didn't show you is the quick controls. Here you can change the volume, brightness, do not disturb, whisper mode, put the glasses to sleep, or turn auto brightness on or off. Um, so again, it's got details of what network, phone, and so forth I've connected to at the bottom. And that's just about it from starting out using the applications on this. I just got these glasses this past weekend on Saturday. I'm excited to explore them a bit further in the near future. So one last thing is how to turn them off. You just hold the power button down. It'll come up with this screen and it says tap the right temple to shut down. And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back with more content soon. Until next time, get out there and enjoy some VR or AR for yourself. Bye-bye now.